Let's explore the relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature. Three important factors that interact when dealing with liquids and gases, especially when they're compressed or heated. Even though we're diving into some cool science here, it all comes down to how the particles inside liquids and gases behave when you change their environment. First, let's talk about gases. Gases are made up of tiny particles that move around freely with lots of space between them. Because of this, gases are much more responsive to changes in pressure, volume, and temperature than liquids. When you heat or compress a gas, things change quickly. When you heat a gas, its particles start moving faster. This happens because heat gives the gas particles more energy, so they bump into each other and the walls of their container more often. This increased movement leads to an increase in pressure, the force that the gas particles exert on the walls of the container. So, if you keep the volume of the gas constant, meaning the size of the container doesn't change, heating the gas will make the pressure go up. This is why things like a balloon or a car tire can burst if they get too hot. The gas inside is putting more pressure on the walls as it heats up. On the other hand, if you compress a gas, meaning you decrease the volume of its container, the particles get squeezed closer together. Since the particles are now in a smaller space, they collide more often, and this increases the pressure of the gas. This is why air pumps, for example, increase the pressure in a tire by compressing the air inside it. If you reduce the volume of a gas without letting it escape, its pressure will rise. Now let's flip it and talk about what happens when you cool a gas or expand its volume. If you cool a gas, the particles move more slowly because they have less energy. This lowers the pressure since the particles aren't bumping into each other or the walls of the container as much. If you increase the volume of the container, giving the gas more space to move around, the pressure also decreases because the particles have more room and collide less often. This is why gases like air tend to expand and become less dense when they warm up and why they contract and become more dense when they cool down. Now, let's switch gears and look at liquids. Unlike gases, the particles in liquids are much closer together, so liquids aren't as compressible as gases, but they still respond to changes in temperature and pressure. When you heat a liquid, its particles move faster, and the liquid can expand slightly. However, since liquids don't expand as much as gases when heated, the pressure increase isn't as dramatic. Still, if the liquid is in a sealed container, heating it can cause the pressure to build up. This is why pressure cookers work. The liquid inside boils faster, producing steam and increasing the pressure, which cooks food more quickly. When you compress a liquid, it doesn't change volume much because the particles are already close together. But if you apply a lot of pressure, like in hydraulic systems, the liquid will transmit that pressure throughout the system, allowing it to do work, like lifting a car in a hydraulic jack. In other words, liquids don't compress much, but they do transmit pressure very effectively. So, what's the big picture? The relationship between pressure, volume, and temperature in gases can be summarized like this. If you increase the temperature of a gas while keeping the volume constant, the pressure goes up because the particles are moving faster and colliding more often. If you increase the volume of a gas while keeping the temperature constant, the pressure goes down because the particles have more space and collide less. If you compress a gas, reducing its volume, the pressure goes up because the particles are squeezed together and collide more often. For liquids, the changes are less dramatic because they don't compress or expand as much. But increasing temperature will still cause a slight expansion, and applying pressure transmits the force throughout the liquid. That's it for today's lesson. Next time you see a tire being inflated or use a pressure cooker, think about how pressure, volume, and temperature are all connected behind the scenes.